Hi and welcome. In this particular video, we are going to see about top 25 questions asked in TCS and Accenture. TCS NQT is right around the corner. So this video is very helpful for you. As you can see on the screen, there are multiple cards that are created and divided as per the companies. From this, in this video, we are going to see about these top 25 TCS and Accenture questions. Fine. I'll share the link in the description box below. So go and try to solve all these questions. I will be giving you the hints to solve some of these questions. Fine. And you can see here, there are several questions which are very famous. For example, array rotation, find the missing number, find the leader. Interesting error is a two sum question. Fine. Then we have longest spelling drawing substring, power of two, determine prime, search triplet, sort in a unique way. There are very, very famous questions here. The video is going to be very helpful for you. And the main motive is that I am giving you the hints, but you have to try to solve the questions as much as possible from your end. So before moving forward, hit that subscribe button and click on the bell icon. Let's get started. So let's go for our first question that is leap year or not. So it's a very basic question, whether a particular year is a leap year or not. I hope you know what are the conditions to check for a leap year. So one condition is where the number should be, the year should be divisible by four. That is correct, but there are more conditions. And the conditions are, if the number is divisible by four and it is not divisible by 100, Okay, it is not divisible by 100. That is also one of the condition. If it is divisible by 4 and not divisible by 100, then it is a leap year. Or if it is completely divisible by 400, then also it is a leap year. Okay, so 2. If it is completely divisible by 400, it is a leap year. If it, it is divisible by 4 but not divisible by 100, okay, then it is a leap year. So accordingly, right if else, done. That's it. So go and try this question right now and gain some confidence. Fine. The next question that we are going to see is array rotation. So in this question, it's very simple. It is uh, an array is provided to you and you just need to rotate it in the right direction with K elements. So K is also provided. For example, if we take this, that is five, two. So there are five array elements and K value is two. So one, two, three, four, five. And we need to rotate K times in the right direction. So First time when we rotate in the right direction, we get 1, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4. Second time when we rotate, we get 4, 5, 1, 2, 3. So that is my output. That's it. That is what you have to do. And see the constraints here. There can be a case where K is greater than N. So this is a corner case which you need to think how to handle. It's very simple. Just think how to handle. Take this sample test case and think 5, 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Fine. Now, how to solve this? Obviously, the basic way is to simply do what the question is asking. Move the 5, move 4 and shift all the elements. But the time complexity will increase to order of n square. Fine. So what is the algorithm we are going to use to reduce that? We are going to use reversal algorithm. Fine. So there is an algorithm called reversal algorithm. That is the algorithm we are going to use in this. So if I tell you what is reversal algorithm, it is very simple. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. K value is 2. So first reverse the last two elements. K value is to reverse the last K elements. So we get one, two, three, five, four. Simply reverse, simply reverse. Now reverse the remaining front elements. So we reverse it three, two, one, five, four. So first we reversed this. Then we are reversing this. Third, reverse the whole array. So we get four, five, one, two, three. And that is the required output. So I hope you understood the reverse algorithm is very simple. First, reverse the last k elements. Second, reverse the remaining first elements. Third, reverse the whole array. And this is how you will achieve array rotation. Fine. So you will use this reverse algorithm. Go try this question out. Try to code it. Code as much as possible on your own. Think as much as possible on your own. I'm just giving you the hints here so that you guys can try and code it. If you have any doubt, you can simply comment down in the comment box. Fine. Let's go for the next one. Find the missing. Okay. So here the question says, if let's suppose I'm giving you four. Okay. So there will be numbers given between one to four and one number will be missing. Okay. It can be in any order. So it, they can give you one, two, three. So that means four is missing. Now we can give one, uh, four, three. That means two is missing. Okay. If n value is five. So that means from one to five, any number can be given in any order but one number will be missing and we need to find that number. For example, two, four, one, three. Fine. So five is missing. 
fine if i give 2513 that means 4 is missing so we need to find the missing number that is the question pause the video and try to think how you can do it brute force approach optimized approach in both the ways okay so one of the way to solve this is you guys may have guessed it that sort the array so if you sort this we get 1 2 3 5 fine when we sort it now we know the index is 0 1 2 3 fine we know we will simply get the number which is missing by comparing it with the indexes okay so i can just compare i plus 1 with the array element okay with array of i fine so 0 plus 1 should be equal to this 1 plus 1 should be equal to this 2 plus 1 should be equal to this 3 plus 1 should be equal to 4 but it is not equal to 4 it is equal to 5 that means 4 is missing we are simply comparing with with the index since we know that the number should be from 1 to n okay but for that we need to sort the array and if you need to sort the array the time complexity is what is the time complexity time complexity is n log n correct now how we can solve this question in less time complexity how you can solve this question let's say in order of n or how you can solve this question let's say can you solve this question in less than order of n can you just think about it can we solve this in order of n yes we can how see we know the numbers will be in the range of 1 to n every time okay and one number will be missing okay so what you can do you can find the sum of the first n natural numbers okay that will be n into n plus 1 divided by 2 now you got the total sum and you have an array where one number is missing if you get that sum how you will find how you will find the missing number come on just think about it if n value is 4 so the total sum we get is 10 okay 4 into 5 divided by 2 is 10 So one plus two plus three plus four, and now suppose one number is missing. So let suppose two is missing. So what is the sum here? One plus three plus four. One plus three plus four. That is seven plus one eight. Now if we just subtract it, we'll get the answer. Correct? There is a trick here. Remember for C, C plus plus and Java guys, just think about the data type that you will be using here. Okay? Just try to code it out now. I'll give it. I have given you the hint. Moving forward, let's go for interesting array question. This question is nothing but two sum question, which is a very famous question, correct? And here two pointers algorithm will be used. Okay, so this is a very famous question. Two pointers algorithm will be used. Same for the search triplet question here again. Two pointers algorithm will be used. So it's a very famous algorithm. You guys should definitely learn about two pointers algorithm. Fine. Okay. Moving forward, we can see this longest palindromic substring can be solved using dynamic programming. Can be solved without using dynamic programming as well, just by using strings. Just think about it. Fine. Uh, power of two can be solved using bit manipulation, or you can directly solve it. For example, sixty-three. Just keep on dividing it by two till we reach one. If it is possible to keep on dividing it by two, okay, then it is a power of two. Else, it is not. For example, sixty-three. We cannot divide sixty-three by two and get a modulo of zero. Fine. So it's not power of two. If you get, let's say, one twenty-eight, one twenty-eight is divisible by two. We'll get sixty-four. Sixty-four again divisible by two. We get thirty-two, and so on. We'll reach one. Okay. So simple loop. If n mod two equal to equal to zero, then divide it. If it is not equal to equal to zero, we cannot do anything. It is not a power of two. A very simple question. Moving forward now. Determine prime. For this determine prime question, we have. Videos already available on our YouTube channel. The links will be shared in the description box below. Fine. So just think about it, guys. You just need to solve these questions. You just need to practice these questions as much as possible. Okay. Because these questions or these level of questions or these type of questions are asked in the company. Fine. So just the practice is required. Therefore, this particular video or this particular type of videos we are making because we know how important the practice part is. Fine. So therefore, only the hints are given. So as the triplet, I already told you two pointers. Find the inversion count. So for find the inversion count, you will use much sort, or actually not much sort. You will use much process of much sort. So what the question says is that if I am given let's say one five two four three, so the inversion means that area of I is greater than area of J, but I is less than J. Okay, that means it is not following your ascending order. Okay, so for example here, you can go for this five. So five is greater than two, but the index of five is less than index of two. So that is an inversion. Okay, you can go for five four as well. 
फाइव इज ग्रेटर दैन फोर बट इंडेक्स ऑफ फाइव इज लेस दैन इंडेक्स ऑफ फोर दैट इज एन इन्वर्जन फाइव इज ग्रेटर दैन थ्री बट इंडेक्स ऑफ फाइव इज लेस दैन इंडेक्स ऑफ थ्री दैट इज एन इन्वर्जन फोर एंड थ्री इज एन इन्वर्जन सो टोटल देर आर फोर इन्वर्जन ओके आई विल अटैच अ लिंक हियर फॉर द वीडियो ऑफ मर्च प्रोसेस ओके हाउ टू मर्च टू सॉल्व डेर इज दैट इज अ हिंट टू सॉल्व दिस पर्टिकुलर क्वेश्चन फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ आई वन फाइव टू फोर थ्री you know in the merge sort what we do uh, we have we divide the whole array multiple times till we reach one one elements correct so we have one element five as a separate element two as a separate element four as a separate element three as a separate element then we merge it we get one and five then we merge this one and five with this two now now see when we merge one and two one is smaller no issue five and two five is greater so increase the inversion count by one okay Two will be here. Five will be here. Similarly, four and three. Four is greater. Increase the inversion count by one. Three and four. So wherever you need, you find this will increase the in, uh, inversion count. So in now in these two, one is fine, two is fine. Now when five and three are compared, five is greater. So three will come and increment your inversion count. Then when four and five are compared, five is greater. Four will come, increment your inversion count, and then last five will come. So total four inversion counts. much process of merge sort okay if you know merge sort you are understanding this if you do not know merge sort please go and learn merge sort okay i have attaching the link for merge process on how to merge two sorted arrays okay that is the crux of merge sort fine that link is provided so we have discussed many questions correct and we have discussed them pretty quickly okay so this is why the video this particular videos are made so that you guys can practice and try to code the questions on your own Okay, what algorithms are used? Which data structures are used? You should know about these things. Okay, and you should be able to solve these questions okay, on your own before you're going to an interview. Fine. So see, you are practicing these questions to clear a particular company. So that means you have learned data structures and algorithms. Fine. That means you have practiced some questions before, and now you are practicing specific questions. Or you want to know what are the questions that are asked in such companies? What is the level? Okay, so I hope all these questions are answered. Fine, and you guys will go and practice these questions. And if you have any doubt in any question, if you want a code, you want some help, just just comment in the comment box below. So this was the video. I hope you liked it. I hope you will practice the questions. Bye bye. Adios.